welcome to our show, A Man's Journey. My name is Mo. And I'm Tepo. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, today we have Frank Morgan joining us. Frank is a lawyer and he'll be telling us a bit more um, about what he does as a lawyer and as well as a businessman. Frank, thank you for joining us today. Welcome, Thank Frank. you, guys. Thank you so much. Today we talk about the essence of a business. Um, tell us a bit about yourself so that people know what type of lawyer and person you are. All right. I'm a corporate commercial attorney. I'm also a public relations expert and an entrepreneur. Um, I schooled in UJ, uh, Pearson, and the John is a big business law firm called um, FM Lega. I'm also an associate attorney at Oregon Attorneys. And lastly, I run a security company called Lions Guard VIP Security. Um, so yeah, we'll be discussing business today and I'm willing to answer every question that we might have. Yeah, our show is to empower people. So we're going to look at what does it takes to start a business. You know, everybody have this uh, concept of business where they say, you know, today, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm starting a business today. Tomorrow I'm going to be a millionaire. Tell us what, uh, what it is uh, to start a business actually or take all right so starting a, a business would involve a lot of things it's not exactly um a, a walk in the park first things first you would have to have what you call a business plan so obviously for a while you should have had in mind what type of business you're going to want to go into and when you finally do get that looking at having a business plan you're looking at having a business name remember also for every business that you might want to start up there's always someone out there who's probably started the same thing, is about to start the same thing, or a company who's probably been running for years. So you must always somehow distinguish yourself, make your company spectacular and peculiar. So you're going to have a business name um, that's different from any other existing one. Okay, your logo, your, your company logo also might, must be totally different from anyone ever seen to distinguish between your company and the rest. Then you must also have what we call a business model. So a business model is what the law would call a modus operandi, how you plan to operate, okay? Mm. And then you're looking at your target market, who your customers are gonna be. Um, you're gonna look at pricing, because now you need to de de decide if you wanna um, sell a product, if you wanna manufacture a product, or if you wanna render a service. Those are the different types of businesses that are available for entrepreneurs. And then lastly, you need to arrange for capital. So those are the first steps you need to take if you're looking into going in business. Yeah, yep. I'm going to talk about uh, own experience yeah, as a marketer. Right. How do a person differentiate uh, who the target market is? Because I know a lot of people who start a business, then they say, no, everyone is my target market. I'm going to sell to everyone. How do they differentiate um, their target markets? All right, so with your target market, your target ma market would be a function of what type of business you're going into. Like you say, you went into marketing. Now, for marketing, the target market won't be, um, for example, a doctor at his At his hospital, those are businesses, uh, um, artists, okay, um, people who, who who need that publicity that a marketer gives. So for every different business that you're going into, that's why that's why something called a market research is important. You must do a market research. A market research ends up reminding you who your target market is. So basically, you're gonna ask yourself, who needs my service or my product. When you answer that question, then you have what your target market is. Now, um, with Mo's first question, when we asked you about the processes of actually starting 
business. You mentioned something about capital. Um, when actually, you have, in terms of getting funding and starting capital, are there any places or organizations that you might know of where a startup can actually be able to get funding or capital for their business? All right, so um, usually we get these questions a lot. Um, funding, uh, sponsorship, business yeah. capital. Every entrepreneur or every potential entrepreneur must be reminded that um, things that can come in different ways. Yes, you might get funding sometimes, but um, for an entrepreneur, what really shows that you are an entrepreneur in the first place is the fact that you must have saved up some money that you want to start a business with so usually you look to yourself first if you're unable to get that you're looking at family and friends. and if that fails also that's where you start looking at companies organizations and institutes who are willing to give funding and at the last end of the chain is um, government departments and non-profits so there's non-profits who are dedicated to youth empowerment who are willing to you know give funding to entrepreneurs who want to start but now it's also a bit tricky getting funding why most people don't get funding is because they don't have a business plan they don't have a business model before you get funding or capital from an npo or, or government organization they need to have been able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that your business will make it and your business will be a success yeah, so if they, if they see no light in your business, if they don't see your end vision, they don't see where you're going to be in the coming years, you might not be getting that. So which is why it all boils down back to making sure that you are self-funded. So you only look at alternative funding if in a way you cannot be self-funded. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I know of certain instincts like crowdfunding also. Um, like a lot of people don't understand uh, the concept, but the difference between like a business model and a business plan. Um, what is the cost or effectiveness of a business model into a business plan? Uh, how can a person who has no experience, like I know I have the business mentality, I know I've been selling um, clothes or anything to the community, but how do I improve or grow in a business plan okay that that's a good question that's a good question um so now you you have the business that you want to do in mind you have a business name um what a business plan tells you is it can it kind of makes you find out where you want to be situated um who you want to sell to how much you can stock up with in case if we're talking about a product if we're talking about a service which is usually easier so um, running a business which is um, um, service centered is actually less um, it's not as difficult as running one where you actually need capital because now a service is something that you can do so for example I have hmm. You're breaking up over there. This is what I studied and actually help clients. Can you hear me? You broke up over me? there. You broke up for a few seconds over there. So, uh, now, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear you now? Can you hear you? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, cool. So let's let's get back into it. So like I was saying, um, a service is easier than a product. For example, I, I studied law and as an attorney, I wouldn't need so much capital to get my work done or render the service to a person. Do you understand me? Mm. Also, for example, um, we have um, a security company. Now, that's also a service, but that's a service that requires more capital, and a bit of more people do you understand so what would happen in that case let's start our, our security 
FM, we, we work only on bouncers. So we have the very big guys guarding quite important people. Okay, so you need to look at where you're going to find these guys. You need to look at um, finding who needs this type of services, you know, and all of that. So business, a business plan and a business model, they, they value something you need to work around, otherwise the, the business will not take flight. Basically. Yeah. No, definitely there. And can you tell us the difference between a commercial lawyer, which you said, and a lawyer, a criminal lawyer? <laughs> because sometimes people think that it's the same thing. So, <laughs> okay. or you, 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 you right. do the same services. No, we don't do the same services, but we all started the same thing in the first place. So um, with law, you can come as, um, there's, there's three types of laws when, when you study. So there's something called BA law, there's something called BCom law, but over and above, the general head is what you call LLB, Bachelor of Laws. So now, after studying law, you need to tell yourself um, where your passion is. Do you see? Yeah, you you need to have a passion but there's also lawyers who do everything so criminal lawyers are the ones who would go bail out clients who were involved in crime or who would go defend them in court if they do need um, a counsel now what commercial lawyers do is we do everything non-criminal related so we're looking at um ip so intellectual property law we're looking at real estate law we're looking at immigration law um negotiation arbitration solicitorship all of that um business law okay now there's also people who are family lawyers they deal with divorce and um, inheritance you know maintenance all of that stuff so we don't all do the same things but what we study allows us to do everything but when you do come out you need to find the niche that actually pays you more that you're more passionate about perfect now to just to touch on just to touch a bit more on you being a lawyer and a businessman, in your personal experience, how has it been for you being someone who owns um, a security firm as well as being a lawyer? How has that experience been for you in terms of those businesses? Okay, so I would say, I would say so far so, so good. Um, it's been quite challenging um i wish i knew with entrepreneurship you learn as you go you don't have all the knowledge in the first place you don't have all the information at the onset but as you go as you meet like-minded people as you meet as you meet good-hearted people you also meet people who don't want your success but being, in, being an entrepreneur allows you to be able to manage all of these spaces. This is why we should discuss uh, mentorship. When I saw the question about mentorship, I actually appreciated that because it's vital mm. on that uh, yeah. entrepreneurial. No, definitely. We wanted to talk about journey. mentorship. And that and journey of a man. You're breaking up over there. You can hear me? I can hear you, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, we're gonna touch on mentorship now when you were talking about, uh, I was gonna say now, uh, when we look at mentorship, like what is your advice around this? Because I know um, some institutes uh, and where they can find um, mentorships and what should they look out to expect from a mentor? All right, let me tell um, quite a story. Um, you guys should check me out on Instagram. Um, the name is Frank J.D. Morgan. I once, during my entrepreneurial journey, wanted um, Vusi Tembequayo to be my mentor. Do you know Vusi? Yes. Yeah, I know Vusi, yeah. I know Vusi. Yeah, so Vusi is, Vusi is quite the guy. Um, if you're talking business and startups, uh, entrepreneurship and all of that. So I remember sending him a DM on Instagram and saying, um, I, will see, um, I like what you're doing. I like the progress you're making. I like how you're helping people. I want you to be my mentor. And Lucy literally replied and said, yo, I would love to, but I'm very busy now. I have a lot of people under me. 
And he gave me an advice. With mentorship, you must look out for not a popular name, not a super successful person. You must look out for someone who is close by and has probably always known you and believed in you and knows that you can actually make it. So that way, mentorship gets less um, of a big deal and becomes more personal and more engaging. So I looked around. I was at UJ at the time, and I, I decided I had found someone who would be my mentor. Um, her name was Mrs. Label. Um, Mrs. Label was the Director of Community Engagement at, at UJ. Okay, what, what, what that lady helped me accomplish is to study or done a business that you've done or uh, somehow around your space. There must be similarity between you and your mentor. So you, it's why you can't just go to looking for a mentor. Your line is bad, huh? You froze up. You froze up. Mentor can be someone. Mm. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you, f Can you, hear you me? just Can you froze up. I, I think it's the network then. Yeah, I think it's the network. Maybe if you can just shift a bit. Uh, okay, let me just move around a bit. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. So yeah, I was saying, um, Libu, um, she was the director of community engagement at the University of Johannesburg, and she really helped me find myself. What I found in, in similarity with her was she studied what I had studied. After law, I also studied public relations because I had this thing for being that guy. I wanted to, to you know, help people with publicity and all of that. I, had, I wanted to get into a bit of fashion and all of that stuff. So um, public relations actually allows you to be in all of those spaces. So um, Lebu had studied public relations from the same school. And when I approached them, I'm like, yo, I'm in need of a mentor. I'm seeing what you're doing. Um, and I want to you know, just come under your umbrella. And she was like, sure, it's fine. So um, she put me through a lot of stuff. I um, always wanted to know how my businesses were going, how my academics were going, and all of that. So with mentorship, you must always look around you look for that's 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 my moral lesson for you guys always look around before you look for it could be an uncle yeah. in the neighborhood it could be a professor at the local university it could be some guy who owns a dealership a car dealership but he's, he's making he's, do, he's doing what he's doing okay so you must always look around before you look for when you look for it's not personal a mentor cannot have a great impact on you if it's not very personal and very engaging mm. Oh, thank you for that, eh? Yeah, definitely. Um, now, just to touch on, just to go back a bit, actually, on the starting a business. In terms of the registration processes, um, people usually think that starting a business is like, I just sign a document or I just run with it immediately and there's no documents to sign or anything like that. In terms of documents, um, what are the documents that a business person is supposed to have to have their business fully running and accredited. Yo, you froze up there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I said in terms of uh, business documents, what business documents does a person need to have for their business to be fully running? All right, let what me... What is the process me... to get them? Okay, let me let me get into that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, cool. So, um, mine. And uh, first thing is business registration. So, business registration will work properly if you already know your business name. All right. So, with business registration, it happens with what you call the companies. Intellectual Property Commission, CIPC. 
okay so with CIPC you put in your business name and you bring in the ID of the director all right um, you need to I would always advise entrepreneurs to do these processes by themselves because it's quite costly having to look for a lawyer or an auditor or bookkeeper or an accountant to have that done yeah. for you you know or those CIP agents so basically I would advise every entrepreneur to go on the CIPC website every time you want to register a new business remember you're not limited yeah business you can open up one business and you don't think it's feasible our when you become an entrepreneur you become what you call and um, being hands on with business registration would actually help you so you don't go around calling people or spending money to do the first step in business okay so cipc yes. would help out with business when you do register the company um a tax yeah. clearance uh, gets sent to you by cipc which actually ensures uh, that the business can actually start running immediately running then now you need to look into it can you hear me guys yes yes now you hear you uh, okay okay cool so remember in business also um you need to know if you want to partner or you want to work alone if you're going to partner this is where um the legal part comes in you need to have a few agreements and contracts that um boldly emphasizes where all of the partners stand so you could decide to open a business with your friend so say mo wants to open a business with natalie okay and they they want to come in together so that's where you need a, a legal representative to say okay this is a partnership i'm going to give you guys the document so the documents you guys will be signing will be what you call an mou a memorandum of understanding and on the other side you have to sign what you call a non-disclosure so if in if if in any case at some point you guys want to separate the business idea and the business model should not be sold out to any third parties yeah. you understand so mm. if you do sign this agreement when they when they breach the the legal representative will be litigating on behalf of whoever was wronged you know yeah so that's that's the process basically so you need to have your cipc documents you need to have your SAS tax clearance 